So now in this video, we're going to look at the 555 timer wired in by stable mode right now. So you can see that LED is on. It's going to stay on until I hit that switch right there. Now that LED is on. The output is actually high right now. The LED is going to stay on. The output's going to stay high until I hit that switch. And so it is stable in two positions. I am the one that actually has to do something to throw it off. Now, I have a capacitor to the rail here. This is called a decoupling capacitor. And uh, the power supply voltage, the rail here, its voltage can change suddenly uh, depending on certain things. And so the capacitor helps prevent that. So I have the power supply here. And you can see I can tap it. Actually, I think I have to have the red LED on. There you go. So I can tap it. No problem. There shouldn't be. Anyways. But uh, I remove this, and for whatever reason, there you can see I didn't hit the button, but the uh, output changed. And so, this is a 10 microfarad capacitor, that value doesn't matter, but uh, you just need enough for whatever your situation is to prevent anything uh, from going haywire, from getting a false signal, and thus changing the output. So again now we are stable so this is set to 5 volts a maximum of 30 milliamps of current we got about 7 milliamps right now and then I'm using a larger value capacitor because the green LED is brighter we got about 3 milliamps of current right there so it's good to have a power supply where you can see that because you can pick up a lot of information about what's going on with the circuit based on current flows so in any case we are going to uh, just kind of strip this down. I'm going to turn the power off and look at the pin layout really quick. And uh, I might as well just leave the LEDs there. They're not uh, hurting anything. Plus we're going to zoom in a little bit to get a little better look. So we have also there's the control pin. Again, if you got stability problems and you'll probably always want to use one, but you can use a 10 nano farad or 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor right there and it helps stabilize the uh, two-third uh, voltage area right there if you have one. Circuits probably work though just fine without it so when I was using batteries I didn't even need a decoupling capacitor at the rail so you probably will see it omitted from schematics same with this one because it takes up space and whatnot, and they assume you already know to use them. But you may even get away without using them. So, in any case, I'm not going to use the uh, capacitor at the uh, control voltage pin. We set and reset this. It's a flip-flop. We use the trigger pin. So you can see pin number two, that goes to a switch. Pin number four, that also goes to a switch. Those two pins are active low. They're waiting for a low signal. So we hit those uh, buttons and it connects directly to the negative rail. It's waiting for that. And pin number two is actually waiting for one third or less of the voltage, which the negative rail is. I'm not sure exactly what voltage this uh, reset pin goes up to. That's uh, testing for another video. But in case the negative rail is definitely below that point. so it will uh, respond to a low signal so that is how we are changing it and uh, I also have this jumper here just to uh, pin 3 that's the output that provides a high or a low power signal to the uh, load and so I just moved over there because this is a large breadboard we have a lot of space the threshold pin now that is waiting for this two-thirds voltage right there and so to avoid it getting two-thirds or higher we are doing the opposite that we did with these that we're going to do with these other two pins we're putting it directly to the negative rail that will hold it low and now here is the schematic so we already looked at most of it we don't have a whole lot more to do plus the load is just uh, basic electronics when it comes to load let's zoom in a little bit though and look at the part number so the actual 555 timer that I'm using, once I get a good view here, is the NE555, and it has the P, so it's some kind of variation. I'm not sure. It's probably a slight improvement. But in any case, the NE555 
is part of the 555 time there. So uh, there's different 555 timers that work basically the same, but they may have some different electrical properties. For instance, this one, the output does not go all the way to 5 volts. It does go to 0 volts, but not all the way to 5. I have another transistor, uh, 555 timer that does go all the way to the positive rail, but it can't provide as much current. So you want to take uh, what you know about 555 timers, look at the data sheet and uh, compare them or whatnot, or at least see the limitations of the one that you're using. So first thing we're going to do, we already looked at the switches. There were a couple of resistors though to begin with and what those do is we give a low signal, that's what those two pins are waiting for and we want to avoid an accidental low signal. Your body can give an accidental low signal or whatnot and uh, cause either of them to jump into action. So these are 10 kilo ohm resistors. They can be high value resistors, maybe even higher or whatnot if you want to save more current. But uh, in any case, we're using a power supply, not a battery. So a little bit of power loss is no terrible uh, big deal. So. We have it to the positive rail. I could just plug it directly to the pin, but things will get a little more cluttered. But there you can see, 10 kilo ohm resistor to the positive rail, and that will keep five volts at the reset pin until we hit the button, because that gives a direct connection to the negative rail. And so that will override any uh, voltage buildup from that resistor. And uh, so again, we're gonna do 10 kilo ohms there and we could go directly to the pin but I'm going to that jumper and so that is really it for wiring this up now now we have a couple LEDs right here so we'll zoom in over to this the output basically either connects directly to the negative rail or pretty close to the positive rail but uh, to make things simple we'll just say it connects directly to the positive rail and some 555 timers do a better job connecting directly to the positive rail. So the red LED we're going to put the long lead the anode to the output because we want that to light up when the output is high. The green LED I wrote that maybe blue because when I made this schematic the first time I was using a blue LED but I had this green one just waiting on the board anyways. The green one has the same basic electrical properties and brightness of the blue LED for the most part. So it's a good substitution. And so I'm going to put it here so it's a cathode, the short lead, that's going to connect to the output right there. And a long lead, the anode, is going to go up one row right there. And so since the green and the blue LEDs get uh, brighter with the same amount of current, I'm going to take a one kilo ohm resistor to provide power and limit current to the green LED. So I realize uh, it's kind of hard to see. I think I'll just remove the red LED for now. So I'm going to put that to the positive rail right there. And so when the output is connected to the negative rail, then we will have a current path through the resistor and the LED and then to ground through the 555 timer. Now we're going to put the red LED back so it doesn't get as bright for a given current and so I'm gonna use a 220 ohm resistor so there's a little adjustment you can make not only that as I said before I think this only gets up to like 3.5 volts or something I'm not gonna actually take the measurements for this I'm just gonna try to go by memory but it doesn't output the full positive uh, voltage it's a little shy so there's going to be a little less current on this side anyways. So you could swap where you put the LEDs, whatever you want to, uh, to make adjustments. So that is it. We have what you see right here. Again, you might see a five with a capacitor that helps stabilize things. But most circuits, you probably won't need it. I think I only ran into one circuit so far where I absolutely uh, needed it. So now I'll turn the power supply on. The output is off, even though the supply is on. Now the output's on. You can see that the green LED turned on. And now, when I hit pin number two, so the reason why you would push the uh, button here, you can see it goes to pin number two. And by the way, I don't usually use dots where there's connections. I usually jump. 
I draw a little line where you jump. So that really bugs a lot of people if you don't use dots where there's connections. But uh, I don't want to make a dot every every time I go here, especially when I only got one jumping. So I just put a jump. Other people, they run the line across if it's not connected and then put dots where it is connected. So I'll just point that out really quick. But in any case, as you can see, right now the output is low until we hit the button. And uh, then the output will go high. Remember, it's a low because we got positive making our way towards negative. If you see the green LED. So pin number two there will get a direct connection to ground. And now the output is high. So these are good voltage measurements to take too. But I don't want to make the video last forever. So it's high. So now it's going to stay high until we hit the uh, reset pin. Give it a low signal right there. And now we're back to the it jumped down back to the output being low so you can see negative there if you see the green LED right there and if you see the red LED that means the output is high right there the way that we have it wired up and before we end this I'm gonna add a modification that I really like I have here a light dependent resistor its value of resistance depends on how much light is falling on it when it's dark it has a lot of resistance and when it's bright light on it it has practically no resistance so you want to make sure you have enough uh, resistance if it gets down to zero ohms of resistance to protect it from high current the uh, pin does not take in or push out any current it just looks at the voltage so when you pick a resistor protect the light dependent resistor and also for sensitivity but in any case we will just squeeze this in here so go to the negative rail right there and let's uh, flip it there so right now it is bright enough where it will flip back the reset pin overpowers uh, anything else the 555 timer is doing and so it set the output uh, low but now the trigger pin set it high so I'm gonna just kinda of shade this now you can see that when it's dark enough then the output is staying low and then we get a little light I didn't have to move much then that's enough to get it to flip back and uh, I'm surprised we got that much let's dim this a little bit we are using a 10 kilo ohm resistor though so that's uh, that's another adjustment we can make. Now, we can do the opposite right there. So, now, when it gets dark enough, then we want the uh, trigger pin to uh, kick in. So, right now we have it wired for when it is bright enough. And we can, that was to the positive rail. So, we can put this to the negative rail. Let's see how we'll squeeze that in there and put it to pin number two right there and so that's triggering it right now and uh, this will go to the positive rail up here going to the same pin pin number two right there and now we will uh, make it dark and there you can see that uh, it wasn't dark enough till I put my finger over there so again we can adjust the value of the resistor there to change it a bit the resistor is holding it low and uh, till the uh, LED gets uh, bright enough that will pull it high and so when there's a bright light that will prevent pin 2 from doing anything in the setup that we have here but once it gets dark enough we'll get massive amounts of resistance it'll practically get to the point where it's like the resistor is not even there the light dependent and so we'll have a low enough signal once we get below one third of the power supply voltage there uh, it's a voltage divider their resistances determine the uh, voltage uh, but in any case the reset pin again overrides the other pin right there so there's all kinds of ways you can make uh, quick changes to the 555 timer to do interesting things so it's a fun component there I don't know if there still are but there were groups of people that would get together and try to show their different 555 time circuits and whatnot a lot of people have fun with them so in any case hopefully this helped you thanks for watching I will see you in the next video